In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up and use the AWS CLI or command line interface. It's very common when using any of the AWS services to interact with that service through the CLI. So let's get started. I happen to know the direct link for the CLI setup instructions on AWS, but because that link works today, doesn't mean when you watch this video, the link will still be active. So rather than type it in directly, a more natural approach for people will be to search it on Google. So that's what we're going to do. AWS CLI. The first couple links will most likely be ads, but if we come down here, we can see the first link that isn't an ad is this AWS command line interface. Let's go ahead and click on that. That should bring us to aws.amazon.com slash CLI. Remember, AWS is always making updates and changes. If you arrive at this page and it doesn't look exactly the same, that's okay. The overall process should be very close to what we are going to do. Today, the links we need are over here to the right. Tomorrow, they could be on the left or somewhere else entirely. I'm using a Mac today, so I'm going to choose the Mac OS installer. Now that I've downloaded the installer, I'll click to run the installation. I'll navigate through the prompts until the installation is complete. Continue, continue, continue. I'm going to agree. The installation location is fine. I'll click continue. We'll say install. All right, and it says my installation was successful. So I'm going to click close and they can move the installer to the trash for me, that's fine. To confirm the installation was successful, let's open up a terminal and see if the AWS command line tool works. I'm using command space on my Mac to search terminal. Now to confirm the installation was successful, let's just type AWS here in the terminal and make sure we get some feedback. All right, so the AWS CLI has been installed successfully. However, we haven't given it access to our AWS account. We're going to need to generate a security key in secret to connect. Let's jump over to our AWS console and generate a key in secret. I'm going to go back into my browser. And this time I'm going to log into AWS. I'm going to log into my account. If you're installing the AWS CLI, I'm going to assume you already have an AWS account and you either have privileges to generate an IAM key in secret or you've been provided a key in secret for a user account. Let's navigate over to IAM. This isn't a video on IAM permissions, so I'm going to assume your user has been provided sufficient permissions. In a minute, I'll demo the AWS CLI using S3. So as long as you have S3 access, you should be able to follow along and try this out yourself. I'm going to select users over here to the left and I'm going to choose my user Scripster. And we'll click on Security Credentials. Now if I scroll down, we should see Access Keys. And here we go right here. We can click Create Access Key. This will generate a key and a secret. Make sure to store these somewhere secure. Whoever possesses this key in secret will have the same access as your user. Also take note, this is the only time the secret access keys can be viewed or downloaded. You cannot recover them. However, you can create new access keys at any time. So if you don't save your access key and your secret here, you'll never be able to retrieve them. You would have to generate a new key in secret. Now let's open our terminal back up to apply this new key in secret to our AWS CLI. So here I am at the terminal, and if I type in AWS space configure, it should prompt me for my access key and my secret. So AWS space configure, we'll hit enter. I'm gonna paste in my access key. I'll press enter and it's gonna ask me for my secret. All right, now that I've put in my access key and secret access key, it asked me for a default region name. You can leave this as none. I typically work out of US East one. So I'm gonna populate that for my default region and then I'm gonna press enter. For the output format, you can leave it as none, but I'm gonna add JSON so that the output that I receive defaults to JSON and that's it. All right, now that we've told our system which AWS account to use and we've set some default properties, you're probably wondering, where is this information stored? So let's take a look. If we CD into a hidden directory called tilde slash period AWS, if you're on a Windows machine, I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the directory structure. It's probably very similar to this, but I know this works on a Mac. So I'm just gonna go into my home directory in period AWS, and you can see I've just CD'd into that directory. Now if I type ls, I have two files. I have a config file and I have a credentials file. If I open up my config, you can see for my default account, I've set the default region as US East 1, and I've set my default output as JSON. If I exit out of that and I open up my 
credentials file, you can see I have default and I have an AWS access key ID and I have an AWS secret access key. I also want to point out here, you can open up these files and if I had more than one AWS account, I could add an additional entry here. I could give it any name I wanted, so I could call this Scripster, and I could provide the AWS access key for an additional account, and I could provide the AWS access key secret for that account, and I would just paste them in here. I'm going to escape out of here, and I'm going to quit without saving. Now that we've successfully added our key and secret and we've set some defaults, let's see if we can use the AWS CLI to communicate with our AWS account. I'll try a command to list S3 buckets. I should be able to type AWS for the command line tool, S3, and then LS to list out all buckets in my account. And you can see I have one bucket, subscribe and like please. So go ahead if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notifications and like this video. Keep in mind the user account whose key and secret we added must have permission to access S3. If this is your AWS account, make sure this user has S3 access. If this key and secret were provided to you, you'll need to confirm with the person who provided the credentials that you were given S3 access. Earlier I showed you how to add an additional profile to your AWS config and your AWS credentials. If I had more than one AWS account, or maybe more than one AWS user for the same account, I can tell the command line tool which profile I would like to use. So if I type AWS dash dash profile equals, I can specify the profile I'd like to use. I'm just going to say default and then S3 space LS and you'll see I get the same information. Now if I was to try and use a profile that did not exist, since I haven't actually added this profile, it's going to say the config profile could not be found. So if you only have one AWS account, you can probably stick to the default. But if you're like me and you're constantly in and out of multiple AWS accounts and multiple AWS profiles, it's nice to know that you have the dash dash profile and you can specify a specific profile that you want to use when running these AWS command line tools. As always, thanks for watching. We'll be using the AWS command line tool for lots of future videos. So I wanted to do this brief video just to show you how to set it up. If you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you get notifications and I'll see you in the next video.